Greetings, M squared here, and we are going to graph some square root inequalities. So it's really similar to when we we're graphing square roots, and if you remember this little sheet of paper that I showed you last time, just to remember what the parent function looks like, what the domain and range are. The parent function, if it hasn't been shifted anywhere, starts at 0, 0, goes out in one direction, goes right forever and up forever. Thus, the domain is always greater than or equal to 0, and the range is greater than or equal to 0. And then the thing inside the radical that's being added or subtracted shifts left or right. The thing outside shifts up or down. The A, the absolute value of A, makes it vertically stretched or shrunk. And then the positive or negative, whether it's positive or negative, tells you whether it's flipped over the x-axis. So those are all important things to remember when you're graphing. Another important thing is if you just have the square root of x and plus or minus, you know, you don't have an A, you go over one, up one, you go over 4, up 2 from that. So that's important to keep in mind. And then knowing what the A would do to that helps it, makes it a lot easier to, to graph. So when we look at this, instead of making a chart or using my graphing calculator, I know that this is shifted left 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and down 3, 1, 2, 3. So I know that's my starting point. I know I haven't reflected over the x-axis, so I know it's going to go like this. But this 1 half, what that does is it cuts this in half, how I would go up. So instead of going over 1 and up 1, I'm going to go over 1, up a half kind of thing. And instead of going over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 2, I would like cut that in half. So it's going to kind of go up not as speedily as the other one. Oops. My apologies, I'm not paying attention. It's a less than. So that means it would have been a dashed. You should have dashed that long, that curve. And then what we want to do is figure out where to shade. So it's less than. Now some people say if it's less than, you always shade down. Well, not necessarily. So I, instead of remembering all the rules, if it's less than and it's positive, then you shade down. But if it's less than and it's negative, the A is negative, then you shade up. Instead of remembering all the different rules, I just pick a point anywhere on the graph. And I usually pick 0, 0 because it's the easiest point to pick. And 0, 0, what I do is I put a 0 in for Y, and I put a 0 in for X, and then I see if this is true. If this point, when I put 0, 0, makes this inequality true, then I know to shade where that point is. So the square root of 5 is 2.2-ish or something like that. If I divide that by 2, I get 1 point something. It doesn't really matter what it is. If I take 1, let's estimate, even 1 or 2, if I take that and subtract 3, I get a negative number. And 0 is never less than a negative number, so I know that this is not true which means that I would shade not above the curve, but below it. And because of my domain error, remember, underneath the radical can never be negative, I have this line right here that I can't cross. It's this vertical line. So when I shade, I can't shade to the left of that. I can only shade this way. So wherever that curve ends up, I would shade like that. Now, if you actually wanted to test some points, you could pick some points. I always want to pick points that will take the square root nice and easy. Then I don't have to use a graphing calculator or a calculator. So for example, we'll just pick a point. If I put a negative 1 in for x, now why I pick negative 1 is because when I add it to 5, I'm going to get a 4. And when, this, when I take the square root of 4, I get a 2. So this part would be 2 when I put a negative 1 in. And half of 2 is 1. And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So when I put a negative 1 in, I get a negative 2. So negative 1 was negative 2. You see it right there, which I had already guessed because of all the transformation knowledge I know. So it really is nice to know that stuff because then you don't have to pick points. But you can pick points or use a graphing calculator if it's allowed. So onto this one. I know I've shifted up 5 and left 3. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that's my starting point. But this negative in front of the square root sign, remember it tells me I've reflected, I've gone, I'm going down now, so I've flipped over the x-axis. But that uh, there's nothing in front of it, a number that makes it go up faster or, or not as fast. So I know that the down one over one or the over four down two works. And this is not dashed, it's solid. So I know that 
to my curve is kind of going like that. But now I need to know whether to shade up or down. So I know there's that line there, but I need to know. So I'm going to pick 0, 0 again, because that's my favorite point to pick. So is 0 greater than or equal to 5 minus 0 plus 3? Well, the square root of 3 is a little less than 2. And 5 minus 2-ish is 3. And 0 is not bigger than 3. So 0 does not work. So I need to shade up. 